Today's world of technology is completely dominated by machines and their behavior is controlled by the software powering it. Now software testing provides the solution to all our worries about machines behaving the exact way we want them to. Now the complexity of software development process is increasing continuously and the software testing approaches needs to evolve to keep up with the development approaches. Hi everyone, this is Shantani from Edureka and in today's session we will see how we can perform the ABI testing with the help of JMeter. Now in our previous sessions we have seen how JMeter works and how we can perform various kinds of testing in JMeter. So in today's session we will talk about the API testing. Now before we begin the session, let's have a look at today's agenda. So first I'll give you a small introduction about the JMeter API and how it actually works. And then I'll give you a step by step guide on how you can perform a particular API testing in JMeter itself. So let's get started. So first let's talk about the API. Now what is an API? It's basically an application programming interface. In simple language, it just works as an intermediate. For example, you are shopping on any online website and you just want to filter out your options. So in case you want something in the color blue, you will go and apply the filter and select the color blue. So now the website will show you only clothes that are of the color blue itself. So how does this work? So as a client, you sent a particular request to the server and the server responds back according to your requirements. Now how does this API work? So API basically works as an intermediate or a gateway between the client and the server. For example, if I go to Google and if I want to shop from a website called as Mindra.com and here I will give my preferences. For example, I want to go into the section of kurtas and suits for women and here I will have various options that I can select from. So in case I just want dresses that are of blue color, so I'll change the color to blue and you can see that it will only show me clothes that are of the shade blue. Now how does this happen? So we have sent a particular request to our server and it's returning back results according to our needs. So this information is carried to the server through an API. Now at times you need to test your API in order to know that if it's performing the job perfectly, if it's actually carrying the right information from the client to the server. Now with the help of this JMeter, we can do this API testing and you can also see how much load your API can handle. So now let's move on and have a look at the steps involved in the API testing in JMeter. Now the first step is that you would need the JMeter tool in your system. Now in order to download the JMeter tool, you have to just type download JMeter in Google and then you can just easily download this particular tool and install it in your system. So here you have a zip file that you just have to download and install and then your JMeter tool will be up and running. Now I've already installed JMeter in my system. So all I need to do is go to the bin folder and here I have a JMeter Windows batch file. So as soon as I double click this one, there will be a command prompt and through which my JMeter will get started. So you can see that the JMeter is ready to start now and this is the user interface of JMeter. So this is where we have to create our test plan and also we can do our API testing here itself. Now if you have any doubts regarding how to install JMeter or anything about JMeter, you can go back and check out our videos on how to install JMeter or the JMeter tutorial and it will show you how you can work with the help of this tool. Now today we are focusing on the API. So we will basically take an example of any particular API that is easily available online. You can take any sort of API for free online and just perform the testing on it. Now in order to do that, let's see what are the steps that you need to perform. So first inside your test plan, you have to create a thread group. So here I have a thread group and I have the number of threads or users as one and then the loop count as one too. Now once you have added the thread group, the next step is to add a sampler that is the HTTP request. Now in the older versions, you had to put the REST API and SOAP API separately or you had to select these options. But in the newer versions, you do not have to include them separately. You can put it all together in the HTTP request. 
So inside your HTTP request, you can just provide your server name, your path, along with the parameters on which you are performing the API testing. So you can just get an API, collect the server name of that particular API, provide the path here, and also involve the parameters here. So now let's see what will be the server name, path, or parameters for any particular API. Now, in order to get an API, you just have to go to the Google and in case I want a REST API, suppose I want to take the example of the weather. So I can just type weather REST API. So now here's this website called as the openweathermap.org. Now from here, you can easily get your API document. So here we have this API doc and once I open this, you can see that you have examples of your API calls. Now these are the links to your API that will provide you the weather for any particular country or city. Now before you get these API calls, you have to sign up here in order to get a valid ID, you need to sign up. So I have already signed up and got my valid API ID. So this is basically my ID here that is valid. So here I have an ID for myself which shows the weather for the city Kolkata. I can also change this to any other city if I want to suppose if I just type Bangalore. So now this will give me the weather details for the city Bangalore. So here I have already got the API for the weather of Bangalore. So you can sign up and get your own API along with the unique ID as well. Now this particular link will be divided into three parts. So there in our JMeter. We have three different paths that is the server name, then we have the path, and then we have the parameters. So let's see how we break down that particular link into these three parts. Now, this api.openweather.org is basically our server name or the IP address that we are going to provide. So let me just copy this and I'll go to the JMeter and put it in the place of server name or IP. You should remember that you do not use the HTTP in case of JMeter because it automatically considers it as the HTTP. So you need not mention that. So you can just put your server name here. So here it is as api.openweathermap.org. Now we have to put the path here. Now which one is the path? So this one from data 2.5 till weather is our path because this is the parameter that we are considering for our weather which city and also your app ID. So this part is our path. So I'll just copy this and I'll go to the JMeter and paste it here. So now we have specified our path as well that we have to go inside this particular server, then enter into this particular path and then we will fill our parameters here. Now this is the section where you're going to fill up your parameters. So my first parameter is Q. So here you can see that I have two different parameters. So first we have Q which represents the city or the country name for which you are taking the weather and then the next parameter is the app ID. So here I have my own unique app ID. You can get yours too. Now going back. So the first parameter is Q for which the value is Bangalore. You can also give any other city if you want to or any other country that you want to see. Now next you have to just click on add because we have two parameters. Now the next parameter is our app ID. Now I'll just go to the link and copy my own ID and here I'll give this as the value. So now this is done. We have set our HTTP request where we have provided our server name also the path that it needs to get into and along with the parameters. Now once this is done, you just have to add another listener. For example, if I want to view the results in the form of a tree, I'll just select view results tree. So now once we run this test, it will show me the results in the form of a tree here. Now before we run the test, we will just save it. So let me just save this one in my bin folder as API. Now the extension for JMeter is .jmx, so it will save as api.jmx. Now once I have saved this, now I can run this test. So you can see that the test has been completed and the status is green. So once I go inside this HTTP request, you can see the thread name and every other detail about the request that I have made. So you can see the load time, the connect time, the latency, size and all of these. Now you can see the response code as 200 and also the response message says OK. 
Now once you go to the response data, you can see the exact data that we had taken in our API. That is we have the coordinates, the longitude, latitude and also the country, the sunrise time, the sunset also for which city you have taken the weather is also mentioned here. Now this code 200 represents that your test has been completed successfully and you can see that the exact value you have got in your J meter as well. Now in my previous video I have already told you that this response code 200 shows the success rate. Now in case you're asking for the response assertion and you put any other value it will show you an error. So here we have just one HTTP request because in my thread group I've just put the number of users as one and also the loop count is one. But what if I increase the number of users here? So suppose I make it 10 and then I run the test. So you can see that now there are 10 requests that have been tested and all of these are providing the correct status of my API and it's showing the exact weather conditions that were provided there. So you can see that status for all of these is green. That means it's able to take this much load. Now increasing the number of threads means that you're increasing the load on your API. This also helps you in testing your API. That is how much load it can actually handle. Now if you keep increasing the number of threads, you can see that the performance timing will also differ. Sometimes if you put too many number of users your API might crash and might not be able to handle that much amount of load. But let's just increase this and see how much load my API is able to take. Suppose I change the value to 30 and then let me just clear the previous results and then run the test again. So you can see that this API is able to hold 30 HTTP requests and it's still working fine and the status for all of these is green. Now talking about the response code. So here what we can do is add another response assertion. So we have to go to assertions and then we have response assertion. Now in response assertion basically we will just add our response code. So in case I'm just adding the number 200 which is our response code here and go back to my tree and clear the previous results and once I start the test again. You can see that the test is up and running fine. All of the status is green and the test has been completed successfully. But what if I change this response value to something else? Now if you change this value to suppose 201 and now I go back and clear this result and perform this test. So now you can see that the status is not green anymore. It shows some error because your response code does not match with the response assertion value that you have given here. So here you can see that your response code value is 200 but in this case you have provided 201 and thus your test is not completed successfully. So you have to keep in mind that 200 is the value that gives you the success rate as well. So you cannot provide any other value in your response assertion either. Now again if I go back and change this value to 200 and then come back and clear this result and start the test again. Now you can see that it's back to green and the status shows OK. Now we have the sampler result and the response data working perfectly all right. Now in this case in the HTTP request I had considered one rest API which was an example of the weather. Now the same way you can Google a SOAP API for suppose any other example that you want. So in case you want a SOAP API for anything. So for that you can just go to the Google page and type SOAP weather API. Now you can select any of these websites and just get your SOAP API for weather or any other example that you want to take and then go back to your J meter in the same place you put the server name then add the path and also add the parameters. Now in this case your parameters will differ because for SOAP API you will have different ID and different parameters. And in the same way you can view your results in the tree format and also increase the number of thread groups every time you want to increase the load or change the load on your API. So this was all about API testing in JMeter. The process of testing any particular API on your website is pretty easy when you use the JMeter. Now if you have any doubts regarding any sort of testing in JMeter you can go back and check out our playlist on JMeter where I have performed different kinds of testing such as the performance testing load testing and then we have the non GUI mode of testing all in JMeter.
Also, if you face any trouble with these steps, do let us know in the comment section below. We will get back to you as soon as possible. Till then, thank you and happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!